This is going to be your guide to getting the Galarian Legendary Birds in the Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra DLC. So the first thing you need to do is make it to the south part of the Crown Tundra at the Dyna Tree. It's the big red tree from the trailers that showed the Legendary Birds there. Really no difficulty getting there. You can fly to where you encounter Regirock depending on where you are in the story or just head south from Giant's Bed. When you arrive the first time there's not going to be Legendary Birds but you get an update from Peony that kind of gives you a little idea on on what to do to encounter these Pokemon and even though it seems straightforward and even though most of the story for the legendary Pokemon holds your hand this is kind of tricky and that's the biggest reason I'm making guide so if you end up getting helped out by this guide at all don't forget to leave a like and share with your friends on social media Facebook discord Twitter all that good stuff so let's start off with Galarian Articuno because this can be a really tricky Pokemon to find and then catch now, I heard it once in Freezington, but when I looked around, I didn't see it. And there's reports that you can find this Pokemon just kind of flying around in the Crown Tundra. But what worked for me is that I went to a Max Raid battle, so I went to a Dynamax Den, I time skipped from it, and that seemed to reset Articuno into this area. So then I went to the Registeel Cave, and it showed Articuno flying towards Freezington. So I chased it down, and then things got a little spooky. Effectively what happens is it pulls a double team and it turns into a shell game, so if you find the correct Articuno, then you get to battle it. Here's the hint, that the real one throws up its wing and then it moves around really fast, so you have to track it really well, and sometimes it can just come down to luck. I wasn't really paying attention because I didn't know what was happening, but I ended up finding Articuno on my first encounter. I didn't want to mess with it, so I just threw a Master Ball. You can do the same. Hopefully you still have one, like it's probably a good choice to use that one from Peony, or if you're a good player and you didn't waste it in the Pokemon Sword and Shield story, then you got some extra Master Balls to make this a bit easier. Now if you end up failing the shell game, Articuno will just fly off into a different part of the wild area, so you have to chase it down, play the game again, and then hope you get it right, and that's going to be the Galarian Articuno. Okay, so for Galarian Moltres, I want to play around with the spawning mechanics and test a few things I didn't get to test with Galarian Articuno, such as what happens if you leave the area and then come back? Is it going to respawn the Pokemon where it initially spawns? Also, I want to check some of the other things. So I saw Moltres like right there the first time I arrived in the Isle of Armor, but it looks like it still has a little bit of a timer. However, if you cut it off, like that's how you upset it and then it might fight you. Where'd he go? Yeah, there he is. All right. So I'm in his way, and... Uh, I can't exp Like, this sounds easier than the way it's been described to me by everyone else. So I went to the wild area, spawned the first time, left, came back, and then it, like, spawned further behind. And then I was able to instantly cut it off by just hopping on my bike. And I guess we're just going to play this one out like a kosher battle. So let's go Pokemon, Aegislash, it's a dark type, so we don't have to worry about not being able to false swipe it. Hit it a few times. This Pokemon's actually pretty bulky. Its stats are kind of interesting like that. So, full paralysis, that's helpful. False swipe. I, no, I was about to say, I think a Sacred Sword is safe, except it's not because it's neutral and Aegislash is kind of filthy on damage. So, we're just going to see what happens. We're just going to get lucky. Three false swipes. It's daytime now because I time skipped and oh, I've been playing this game for over 12 hours. That could maybe be it as well. So now we're chilling. False swipe. I don't think there's any special balls that really give us too much of an advantage on this Pokemon. And if it wants to keep spamming Sucker Punch and we're throwing Pokeballs, then it shouldn't be too much harder to catch. I am going to go into King's Shield. That way we're as tanky as possible and we don't take like a stray crazy hit or something. So we got that, Fiery Wrath, there we go. We're protected anyways, so that helps out. Leftovers heals us up. And now this should just be a good catch. Ultra Ball, seems like our best bet right now. And we're gonna be here for a while. So also a reminder with the Timer Ball, Timer Ball kicks in on turn 10. So we just did five turns and set up the Thunder Wave. Actually, no, we did six turns. Thunder Wave, Switch, three False Swipes, King Shield. That's two Ultra Ball fails. I mean, we fail a couple more Ultra Balls, we go to Timer Balls, and then we're at 4x at the perfect catch rate if you don't care about Pretty Ball. Or... Never mind. 
Now, if you're just spamming a single ball type, I think it's worth going into the bag and then mashing the A button, so that way you don't have to worry about hitting X every single time. So, we have 71 timer balls left. I use a lot- of, I use like 30 of them to try to catch uh, all the Pokemon so far. So, if we get a crit capture, that'd be a little extra nice. Hurricane. Doesn't really matter. Pretty much, yeah, if you have a Pokemon that loves you, like my Aegislash, just makes the game easier. Sucker Punch is a free hit- or a free turn on this Pokemon. Really, no offensive threat, it seems. It's just the low catch rate, and you gotta deal with it. That nasty plot's a little scary, though. But we catch it before there's any problems. I guess now we pretty much just do the same thing for Zapdos, and it's not Electro-type anymore, so we get to paralyze it. Cool. And then, for the last one, we have Galarian Zapdos. This one, you just get to run it down. So you chase Galarian Zapdos down, and then you have a good old time. Once you find it- Hey, there he is! That is so- That's like when the Slowpoke run. It's pretty crazy, but... I guess this is just an endurance match. Oh! He turned around. Is that it? That's it. So, you pretty much just have to do a lap around the wild area. And then he's like, okay, you're worthy. That's cool. Get a little bit of fun out of it, and then it's like, nah, we're going. We're fighting now. So... Oh, I didn't even throw my quick ball! That's bad on me. I should have done that for the Articuno, too. Even though I was, like, scared the Articuno was going to run. But once you get it, it's not like a roaming Pokemon that traditionally runs away or something. So, yeah, if you're having a hard time spawning the Pokemon or getting them where you want, leave the area, come back. That seemed to work surprisingly well for me. Uh, once a Thunder Wave. And then pull shenanigans. I think it works on the Zapdos. Because I think the Zapdos is the one that has 100 speed. And then that gives us 4x catch rate, but that's still pretty low. Like, we've seen timer balls fail a lot, so... Rip fastball. Would have been neat, but I don't care enough to actually, like, continuously reset for that. And... Maybe give a couple premier ball tries, you know, throw a couple turns of that, then go into the timer balls. Maybe we get lucky. If not, timer balls are our best bet. Also, one thing that's worth noting is that you can synchronize these Pokemon if you want to. So you just have a synchronized Pokemon, fainted potentially in the first slot, or just a normal one, and then you can get that way. I think mints are plentiful, and if you have like a ton of leftover battle points just from playing the game so far, then it's not really the hardest thing to mint a Pokemon. I just say run out and catch it, unless you are just like overstressing about ball, nature, fun stuff like that. Nice. Very nice. Cool. So, we got we got the Eclectic Pokeball Collection. We got all these Pokemon. Let's head back to Bird Tree, because I actually have no idea what's going to happen. And then, nothing happened. So, that was my last expedition, which means now we're going into the Ultra Beast arc. So, if you want more of that content, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Even though notification bell doesn't work, YouTube has a stupid thing where they only send three notifications per day, which doesn't work when you're making new videos on a new game non-stop like I am. So, keep checking back on the channel for all that hype. And maybe at the end of the Ultra Beast story, or as we finish up, we'll figure out what's going on with this tree and legendary birds. But that's how you get them. It, the simple, no-nonsense way of just having it work. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.